What's up YouTube, it's Matthew here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to show a property when the seller's home. Let's say you have a cash buyer and it's not a vacant property and the seller still lives at the property. You know, how do you handle that uncomfortable interaction between the seller and buyer? And what are things that you can do beforehand to eliminate any possibility of the buyer trying to steal your deal or just the seller going behind your back and trying to talk to other investors while you're showing the property. So in today's video, I'm going to just explore that with you all a little bit more, tell you all about my own personal experiences with that and just different ways that you can just really control the whole interaction, the whole deal from start to finish. Before we go on, you all be sure to subscribe to this channel. A lot of you all watch my videos, but you're not subscribed. So please subscribe if you don't mind. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subs pretty soon. So help me reach that. And you know, just to bring more value to you all and you all can just be updated on the different videos that I upload to this channel. Another thing you all like this video and then comment down below on how you interact between your sellers and buyers. How do you handle the situation? I would love to hear down in the comments down below. And if you're interested in the online course that I have, how to wholesale A to Z, check the links down below. I answer all your questions about wholesaling and it's just good to have all of the videos in one place. So how do you show the property when the seller is home? All right, I get this question a lot. And um, the first thing I wanna talk about is how to establish authority and transparency with your seller beforehand. So before you even have a buyer for the property, when you go to a seller's home, you're wholesaling the property, all right? You're not buying it yourself. And so you have to, in a way, make that known to the seller. And so what I like to do when I'm talking to the seller and I know it's a hot lead and I can put them under contract that day, what I say is, hey, you know, I'm an investor. I work with other investors and my partners and contractors, and we need to look through this property. And so they are the ones that bring in the money to fund this deal. And so by me bringing them in this deal, um, they need to see this property. And so I'm, I'm going to need, you know, if we're going to continue on with this deal, with this agreement, I'm going to need access to this property or um, just different viewing times for my contractors, my partners to view this property. And so that's usually how I phrase that I'm wholesaling to a seller, just saying, hey, I have partners who fund a deal, they need to see the property, contractors, they're gonna come in, look at the property, just get our estimate bids and different things like that. You know, we're still good with the price and everything, like that won't change or anything like that, but this is where we're at and I need like a couple days, probably one or two showing times to show them the property. If I have a property locked up for 30, 30 days, I may have two showings within those 30 days. So that's one way I phrase it with the seller. So when I bring the buyer in, they're more aware, they're un they understand what's happening and because you already explained that to them. You don't want to just say, hey, I'm buying your property no matter what. And then you say, hey, I need to, you know, all of a sudden show up to their doorstep with a cash buyer. You know, they're going to be a little bit hesitant. You know, they're going to start questioning who you are and what you're doing exactly with this transaction. And so it's really good to provide that transparency and just communicate with them. Hey, we're going to come back here with other people to your property. Another thing is that if you build enough transparency and rapport with your seller, this last deal that I'm working with, I built so much rapport with the seller that I straight up let them know, we're trying to find someone to buy your property. We're not trying to buy it. And they knew that and they were 100% okay with that. So I was you know, pretty direct with them and we would bring people in. Whenever they left, they would ask, so are they gonna buy our property? Are they the ones who are going to fix it up? So they knew everything about that and they were totally fine with what, what we were doing. And so if you can build enough transparency and rapport with your seller, you can be as direct as you can because they understand you and they trust you. So now that we established that transparency, that communication between yourself and the seller, now you have to do that with the cash buyer. You have to establish authority and control of the deal, especially with cash buyers, because cash buyers, they're investors. They know the game, they know what wholesaling is about. 
they're competitive just like you're competitive so you really have to up your level of authority and confidence when you're talking with cash buyers and investors one of the main things i say when a cash buyer is interested in a deal even before showing them the property i make it 100 percent clear this is an all cash purchase usually done at a title company or you can do it through a hard money loan, right? So I established, hey, 100% cash, we're not doing any loans, no funny business like that. You see either hard money loans or this is a cash purchase. And then on top of that, I established that, hey, all, all closing costs are, are being paid by you, the cash buyer. Cash buyer is responsible for all closing costs between the seller and the buyer. I made that mistake in my first deal. I didn't make that um, known to my cash buyer, so I had to take on the closing costs for my seller, which wasn't much. It was only like less than $200, and I still got a good amount for my first wholesale deal. But it's very important for you all to establish that early on, even before the cash buyer views the property. You know, of course, I let them know about the repairs, I send them pictures, and then when they're ready to see the property and the seller is there, I like to let the buyer know hey, you know, the seller is there. Um, you know, just to respect their privacy, I ask if you have any questions about like price or making an offer, just keep that between me and you. If you have any questions about, I guess the property itself, you know, of course you can talk with the seller while I'm there and, and we can go from there. So I like to say that because I don't want any price to come up while the buyer and seller's there at the same time, because obviously I have a lower price, um, with the seller and I'm advertising it to the buyer for a higher price. And so I make it 100% clear that, hey, if you have any questions about price, keep it between me and you, all right? And you have to speak with confidence. You have to just make that known to the cash buyer. And they're usually fine with that. They're usually, okay, totally fine, understand, no worries. I think that in a way, you know, it puts them on guard. They know, hey, you know, Matthew, the wholesaler really told me if I had any questions, just come to him. We could talk about offer and price later after we view the property. All right, so now let's say you have them both in the house, right? What I like to do for me personally, uh, if you have a partner, this is good too. Like if you have a partner, you can have one person stay with the seller and another person stay with the buyers. But if it's only yourself, I usually just like the cash buyers to roam freely, to go around, do their inspections, look outside, and I stay with the seller and just communicate with them, build more rapport, see how their day is going. Um, because like, if I'm just with one buyer, another buyer can go to the seller directly on their own term and just start talking with them. So I, I really want to, you know, be that mediator between the seller and buyer. So make sure you all, if you're, if you're there and there's a couple buyers there, always stick around where the seller is. Um, and always be there when the buyers have questions with for the seller about the property that price is not brought up And if they is this about repairs? Oh, what is this about and you don't know yourself? You know the seller of course can answer it And so that's what I like to do usually when we're meeting at the place your cash buyers They view the property, you know They ask a few questions about the property to the seller but nothing about price and then later what I like to do after the appointment the scheduling the showing is done we go outside and i usually talk directly with the buyers hey what are you thinking what are your offers let me know sometimes they'll let me know later that day or on the spot and so we start talking about that if we agree upon something i send them an assignment on contract now let's say you cash buyer has an issue with you and your assignment fee right what you like what i like to say is hey, you know, I hold the agreement to this property. And that's, again, establishing your credibility and your authority with this transaction. You hold the contract, that means you hold the power to this transaction. Don't let a cash buyer try to rough you up, try to do anything uh, like that to you. Just establish that authority, say, hey, you know, I know this is a great deal. I know you will make plenty of money and I have a line of other buyers interested in making an offer on this property. If you're uncomfortable with my assignment fee, just move on, totally fine. I'll just go on to my next buyer. And just explain it, you can be that, you can say that in a respectful way, but in a confident way also. All right, you all? All right, you all, I hope you all really enjoyed this video. It's a very practical, straight to the point video about what to do, how to show the property when the seller is home. You know, I've done that countless of time. My first deal was like that. Um, 
I would say more than half of my deals, the seller is at the house, right? The seller is there at the appointment with me. So I have been, been able to establish, you know, how to navigate that, how to handle the buyer and the seller being there. So I hope these tips will help you in your wholesaling business. I hope you all have a happy new year and, you know, just continue enjoying family time and different things like that. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I hope you all have a great day and I'll talk to you all later.